Good day everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to a new review. For today we have the latest flagship from Xiaomi, the Mi 6 and this phone costs somewhere around $450, but for that money we get better specs than on the Galaxy S8. Even though we get better specs than on the S8, I find the S8 much better looking and of course the Mi 6 is not a bad looking phone, but it doesn't look exceptional either. For specs we get the Snapdragon 835 CPU, we also have 6 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage and the phone is running Android 7.1. Now before we go any further, can you help me out by pressing that like button and subscribing if you haven't done so? The Mi 6 is made out of glass on the front and on the back, but this makes the phone very very slippery and they actually included a silicone case with the phone because the phone is just too slippery. Size wise, well the phone is quite small and you are going to be able to use this holding it in one hand, but I really wish they would have got rid of those bezels around the screen because the way it uh, looks, it looks like a phone from 2 years ago. On the back of the phone we have the dual tone flash and two 12 megapixel cameras, one of those cameras is a zoom lens, so you can actually zoom um, with this phone because we have optical zoom available. And aside from that we just have the Mi logo at the bottom. The phone's frame seems to be made out of metal or ceramic, it's very difficult to tell without actually scratching the phone. On the right hand side you're gonna find the power button and the volume keys and these ones are very nice and clicky but it's very difficult to tell what they are made out of. On top we have an IR blaster and a secondary microphone and of course I've tried that IR blaster and it seems to work good but again you have to point the phone right at the TV. On the left hand side you're gonna find a slot for a SIM card, this phone takes two SIM cards so we cannot install a SIM card and an SD card unfortunately. Out of that 64 gigs of internal storage that we get to this device we have about 55 left but the speeds that I got for the internal storage are very very good and compared to the Samsung Galaxy S8 well they're kind of equal. And all the way at the bottom you're gonna find the microphone, the USB-C port and a speaker. This phone supports OTG so you can plug in any USB stick and the phone will be able to read whatever you have on that USB stick and the phone also supports fast charging. And now getting back to that speaker, so this phone doesn't only have one speaker, we actually have two speakers. So we have the one at the bottom and one on the front and that's great because we have a speaker pointed at us. But here is a sample of how the speakers sound. Now you may have noticed that we don't have a 3.5mm audio jack anywhere on this phone so just like on the iPhone 7, however there is an adapter in the box so from USB-C to a 3.5mm audio jack. The downside to that is the fact that you actually have to remember to get that adapter with you at all times so it could be disappointing for some. Supposedly that 3.5mm audio jack was removed so they can make room for a bigger battery so we have a 3350mAh 3, battery inside and the results that I got from that battery are quite good so I was able to get about 2 days of usage on the phone and out of that about 6 hours and a half of um, screen on time so you're definitely gonna make it uh, through an entire day no matter how much you use the phone. And we are moving to the front of the phone, so first of all on top there we have an 8 megapixel front facing camera, the speaker and an LED notification light that can change colors. The picture quality from that front facing camera is great as long as you have a lot of light, as soon as you don't have enough light the pictures become quite grainy. The Mi 6 has a 5.15 inches IPS panel with a 1080p resolution and I know that some of you are not gonna be happy about the resolution but considering the size of the screen I think 1080p is good enough and you are definitely not gonna see any pixels on the screen. The screen has great viewing angles, nice and vibrant colors and it gets bright enough to be seen outside so you can actually see the screen just as good as you'd see an S8 so the screen is that good. The sensitivity is also great so you can touch the screen in 10 places in the same time and the screen will register. Now about that glass that's covering the front screen, I'm not sure what type of glass it is but it's definitely not Gorilla Glass because I got a whole bunch of scratches on the screen just um, 3 days of using the phone and I haven't actually done that much with the phone, the phone was sitting in my pocket uh, most of the time. So definitely some scratches on the screen. And moving all the way to the bottom of the screen there we have the home button, this is also a fingerprint scanner, we have the multitasking button and the return key and you can actually switch those around. Now about that fingerprint scanner, I have to say that this is the fastest fingerprint scanner that I have seen for any phone and this is not a joke, so this is definitely the fastest fingerprint scanner ever. For performance we get some super crazy scores on the Antutu Benchmark and the Geekbench 4 and once again these were the highest scores that I've seen on any smartphone ever. You're gonna be able to use any app available in the Google Play Store without any lag whatsoever, so if you're using Chrome you can scroll up, scroll down, zoom in, zoom out, do anything that you want, the phone will never slow down. 
For the YouTube app, again, the maximum resolution is 1080p and that's because um, that's the maximum resolution of the screen. But all the videos that I've tried watching on YouTube uh, work without any lag whatsoever. For gaming, I've tried a few games. Uh, one of them was Asphalt 8, the other one was GTA San Andreas and uh, both of them were uh, set at maximum settings. And again, there was no lag whenever I was playing um, any games. The GPS unit inside this phone is also super fast, so it only takes 2-3 to three seconds to connect to the satellites and the phone doesn't seem to disconnect uh, no matter what. Of course, I used Google Maps and uh, other navigation apps and they all seem to work without any issues. And for sensors, of course, we have all the sensors that you can possibly imagine. So just like on any other uh, flagship device, all the sensors are there and they're all working fine. For connectivity, the phone can connect to the 4G networks. We have dual band Wi-Fi, so you can connect to the 2.4 and the 5 GHz Wi-Fi bands. And the phone even has NFC, so you could technically use Android Pay. However, Android Pay is not available in Canada yet, so I wasn't able to actually try it to let you know if it actually works. The speeds that I got over 4G and over the Wi-Fi networks are among the best that I've seen for any smartphone. On the back of the phone we have two 12 megapixel cameras and one of them gives us the possibility of optical zoom. Here are a couple of examples of pictures taken from the same spot with the optical zoom. So they do look quite good but they seem to lose a bit of the quality. This phone also supports 4K recordings and I've made a video a couple of days ago um, with some recordings uh, during the daytime in 4K and you can check out uh, that video in the video's description. But now I want to show you how uh, a video recording looks in low light conditions. This is a very quick 4K sample filmed with the Xiaomi Mi 6 in 4K. The camera app looks a lot like what we've seen from other Xiaomi devices in the past but we have a few added features. So the first one would be of course the optical zoom and the second one is the bokeh effect. Now I didn't find this one as easy to use as I've seen for other um, phones with dual cameras in the past. So first of all the phone doesn't focus fast enough, when it focuses it loses focus and you have to be quite far away from the subject to actually take the picture. So to be honest I stopped using it because it is quite annoying. These are a couple of examples of pictures that I took um, with that bokeh effect. And moving back to the camera app, of course, we have an HDR mode, we also have a manual mode, so if you're into tweaking pictures, you can definitely do that. We have a nighttime mode, um, which basically makes the pictures a bit sharper, and the camera app is also very, very fast. So in my opinion, the picture quality is very good. The pictures that you take with plenty of light are bright, vibrant, and they have a lot of detail, but the dynamic range is not as good as something that you would see from a Samsung Galaxy S8. But overall, the pictures taken in daylight look great. And moving to nighttime pictures. So nighttime pictures aren't bad at all, and they're pretty much on par with all the other flagship devices that I tried. Of course, the pictures become a bit grainy here and there, but overall, they're still good for the price of the phone. Now the software. So we have Android 7.1.1 with Xiaomi's own skin on top of it. Some love it, some hate it. Me personally, I don't like it too much. The first thing I notice is the fact that multitasking works much better than in the past. So the phone will not kill the apps running in the background. So definitely a plus. There is also some built-in Xiaomi Assistant, but this doesn't seem to work outside of China, so I can't really comment if it's any good. But aside from that, um, of course, we have access to Xiaomi's uh, theme store, so you can customize pretty much anything about the phone. And I noticed that the phone doesn't slow down for pretty much anything, so scrolling in between screens, opening apps, closing apps, uh, everything works extremely fast. But, like most Xiaomi products, we have some bugs that are present and that's something that happens with pretty much all new Xiaomi devices and I honestly don't know why they sell the products before they finalize the software. So the phone will freeze every now and then randomly and you have to like restart the phone to actually get it back going again. I couldn't catch any of those uh, happening on the camera but uh, it did happen about 4 times in the past 3 days that I've been using the phone, so definitely not perfect. And lastly, the settings app looks very similar to what we've seen from past Xiaomi devices and we have a lot of options and settings in there, but everything seems to be hidden away so you're gonna have to look for everything for quite some time. And it's time to conclude this video. So for the price, we definitely get a lot of value because if you're looking for the same specs from Samsung, yeah, you're gonna have to spend double the money. I wish the screen would be bigger, I wish the resolution would be better on the screen and I wish the phone would look a bit different because yeah, it doesn't look like a phone that was made in 2017. It looks a bit boring. But aside from that and those bugs, of course, because um, nobody likes bugs, the phone performs quite well and I was very, very happy with it. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.